You're listening to OTR FM, part of the Ion Radio Network. IPMNation.com. As a leader in the mortgage industry, the mortgage specialists proudly offer some of the lowest rates available. When you work with an expert from the mortgage specialists, you can rest assured knowing that you are working with someone who truly cares about you. Are you unsure about which loan option is right for you? By giving the mortgage specialists a call today, they would be more than happy to schedule either an in-home or in-branch consultation. They will get to know you and your finances to learn more about how they can help you with your loan option that is best for you and your situation. To learn more or schedule your first consultation, contact the mortgage specialist today at 877-411-0123. That's 877-411-0123, themortgagespecialists.com. Connerton Unleashed, and we're live. It's Thursday night, Thursday, May 5th, 2016. A little bit after 11 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone. Welcome. Yeah, no big uh, fancy super produced intro tonight. I'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit. I I went around the corner for something because I was uh, very, very hungry. And uh, I ended up uh, getting a, a full pizza, <laughs> which required me to, uh, to, to wait a, a couple of minutes. So I'm, uh, so I'm kind of running into the studio here, the Uptown Auto Repair Studio in Manchester, New Hampshire, where we do broadcasts from five nights a week. You can hear Matt Connerton Unleashed on IPM Nation 2. And, of course, Tuesdays and Thursday nights, we also have the honor and privilege of being on the OM Times Radio Network, OTRFM specifically, the premium channel on the Home Times Radio Network. So, uh, and in fact, earlier, uh, if you didn't get to hear it, I was on with uh, Dr. Kevin, uh, which you can also hear on uh, Home Times and uh, IPM Nation uh, on the Dr. Kevin Show. The first Thursday of every month, we, of course, do our thirst-quenching Thursdays. So uh, you can uh, listen to that on demand if you missed it. And uh, let's see, of course... We are sponsored by the Mortgage Specialist, Matt Connerton Unleashed. Very proud to be sponsored by the Mortgage Specialist. So I always say, you know, buying a home is a pretty big deal. You don't have to go it alone. So contact the Mortgage Specialist at themortgagespecialist.com. And also, we're powered by Ambit Energy. If you would like to learn how to save on your energy bills, go to ipmnation.ambitrabbit.com. You can sign up there. You'll be very, very glad that you did. I can tell you that from personal experience. And uh, let's see. This week's television edition is up. Uh, I interviewed uh, Sean Michelonis, who is running for the uh, New Hampshire Executive Council. And uh, some interesting reaction uh, to that interview. But uh, that is up, of course, on the YouTube channel for IPM Nation. And uh, you can see that. We do archive all the television editions of Matt Connerton Unleashed there. I didn't do Ward 13 with John Hopwood this week because John uh, was doing a baseball show. And uh, as everyone knows, when it comes to sports, I'm, I'm quite uh, useless <laughs> in that realm. So, you know, I can talk politics all day. But actually, my three, the, the, the three subjects I'm most fascinated by really always have been are politics, music and religion. Though I'm not religious myself. I've always been fascinated by religion. And, and of course, I, I do another show called Local Outbreak that focuses on interviewing musicians. And this show, we focus on politics mostly. But uh Let's see. Um, We have a a show called uh, The Red Pill on IPM Nation that we've been carrying for several months. And some of you may recall uh, that I interviewed a gentleman named V. He goes by the name V. He's the host of uh, The Red Pill or Red Pill Hardcore, which uh, I found out during my interview with him, unbeknownst to me, that that's actually the name of the show. It's not really The Red Pill. It's Red Pill Hardcore. So I was like, oh, we'll have to change that on the site. Uh, but uh, so I don't know quite what to make of this. Actually, let me pull up the Facebook page. So 
so we had V on this program. I interviewed him. And uh, this was set up uh, via Anthony Thomas, who is a um, is is a producer on the show. And let's see, uh, I'm looking for see the, the the earlier posts might be gone. Um, Anthony Thomas is is, is who. Is is sort of the you know the intermediary uh, because V V is what is called the TI a targeted individual and you can listen to our interview to, to get into that so but very very popular interview uh, that episode of Matt Connerton Unleashed was uh, uh, heavily listened to and downloaded but then Anthony Thomas posted something about earlier about uh, I have fallen no more show uh, V is dead. And uh, I don't know what all that was about. I hope V isn't really dead. Uh, I'm looking at Anthony Thomas's Facebook page now, and I'm not seeing any of that. I'm just seeing all the usual stuff. I don't know. I was going to read you exactly what he had written earlier, but uh, it doesn't seem to be be here. Uh, doesn't seem to be here now. So I don't know. So I don't know if the red pill continues. Uh, like I said, from what he posted earlier, it didn't sound uh, too good. So anyway, hey, if you'd like to enter the conversation tonight, you can. We have an active uh, phone line open for you. 617-917-4476. And you can call us or text us at that number. And, of course, we have the chat room at ipmnation.com slash live, too. You can also tweet me anytime at Matt Connerton. And you can post on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And I want to talk about, uh, we don't have a guest tonight. This is me flying solo here. But uh, this is, um, I think, a pretty interesting story. And it'll be interesting to see if we see more of this, uh, this kind of thing happening. Uh, but, of course, you know, now that Trump is the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party, and you've got, you know, a Republican establishment, many of whom are just kind of freaking out, um, uh, Mark Salter has been in the news uh, quite a bit the last couple of days, at least in the political news, because and he's a, a former, uh, tr- uh, I almost said former Trump advisor, no, uh, a former McCain advisor. He was a, a, a high-level guy, I think, right, right behind uh, Steve Schmidt, actually, for McCain's uh, 2008 bid for the presidency. And... Um, Mark Salter is uh, the first Republican I've seen publicly come out and say, you know, because obviously there's been a lot of Republicans who have tried to distance themselves from Trump, are not very happy about Trump. Um, even, even I, you know, I mean, it's 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 just been, you know, some of them are kind of afraid to criticize him too directly because at some point they're going to have to embrace him. Because it's looking like we're not going to have a contested convention after all, I guess, which is a real bummer because I was looking forward to that. But Mark Salter is the first, you know, high profile Republican I've seen who has come right out and said, I'm voting for Hillary. If it's Trump versus Hillary, I'm voting for Hillary. And he's not being quiet about it. And I was listening to him uh, being interviewed earlier on NPR. Um, he was being interviewed by uh, Robert Siegel, and <laughs> I was actually, I mean, he made me laugh some of the things that Mark Salter was saying. He said that, you know, when Trump talks about foreign policy, he sounds like a drunk guy at a bar. Uh, he said that uh, he doesn't buy Trump's uh, sudden, uh, aggressive, and rather abrupt shift to conservatism, and he thinks Trump is really a, a New York liberal. And he, he actually believes that Hillary is probably more conservative than Trump uh, and that uh, Trump is just trying to fool everybody. He also said, said things like, uh, you know, Trump is very dangerous, not only because of the foreign policy thing, but because, you know, Trump, he said, for example, one of Trump's proposals that he spews out is, uh, you know, a 45 percent tariff on imports, which would uh, destroy the global economy. <laughs> You know, that's a pretty drastic thing to do, 
all of a sudden slap a 45% tariff on all imports. And, uh, you know, so he talked about how Trump clearly knows absolutely nothing about the economy or how the economy works or, you know, he just said Trump is extremely dangerous and must not be president. And so while he's not enthusiastic about Hillary and he said that uh, Hillary uh, would be a- absolutely the uh, the most um, the, the only Democrat that he's ever voted for in his life. He's never voted for any Democrat before. Uh, but he's willing to bite the bullet and vote for Hillary uh, to stop Trump. Um, he did say that, uh, you know, that that uh, he would consider uh, voting for a third party candidate, a viable third party candidate. Uh, but uh, but he also he's hesitant to vote for anyone who might um, might take votes away from Hillary and therefore inadvertently caused Trump to win. Just like in 92, some people to this day claim that the only reason George W, uh, it's not George W. Bush, George Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush was denied a second term and why Clinton was elected was because Perot, Ross Perot being in the race, took votes away from Bush. And that gave the advantage to Clinton. So he wanted to avoid that kind of a situation. So he was kind of res- uh, reticent about voting uh, third party. But uh, so he's voting for Hillary and he's uh, like I said, and he's not being he's not being quiet about it. And uh, he was he was very blunt. It was a very interesting interview. Actually, uh, I'll see if I can find the audio from that. I'd like to play that on the air, but we'll be right back. We're coming up on a break. More Unleashed coming up. Don't go away. Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Back everybody, Matt Connerton Unleashed. We're live on this uh, Thursday evening. So glad you're with us. Of course, we're uh, live tonight on IPM Nation Two. As we are, you can hear the show five nights a week at 11 p.m. Eastern on IPM Nation Two. And of course, uh, Tuesdays and Thursday nights we're also on OTR FM. And boy, there's all kinds of interesting. This um, I'm going to read you a couple things that are on Politico about this. Here's what's really interesting about this. So 
so now you have these Republicans who are saying who are actually well, you've got one Republican of note who's coming right out and saying he's supporting Hillary. There may be more. There is a push to get more Republicans to vote for Hillary against Trump. What is particularly fascinating about this to me is that it's an instance where not only is there a push to get Republicans to vote for the Democrat against a member of their own party for the presidency, but of all Democrats, it's Hillary Clinton. Because I always say, I have never met a Republican who dislikes Hillary Clinton. I've only met Republicans who have an intense, seething, loathing, and hatred for Hillary Clinton. In fact, if conservative Christian evangelical Christians weren't, weren't already convinced that Barack Obama was actually the Antichrist, they would probably assume that she was. Um, that honor seems to have uh, fallen on him by the, you know, the, the Christian right-wing conspiracy theorists, but, um, but maybe they'll pivot toward uh, believing Hillary is, is actually the Antichrist. Um, no, it's not Ted Cruz, despite what John Boehner said. John Boehner, I mean, Ted Cruz is not really Lucifer. He's just a klutz. I talked to him at the show the other night. The, the video, if you haven't seen it yet, it, it's, uh, it's just Ted Cruz. Uh, it, you've got you've to watch it. At the end of, uh, at the end of his uh, concession speech, when he dropped out of the race, as he's turning to hug and embrace his father, uh, Rafael Cruz, you know, his dad, the one who helped kill Kennedy, according to Trump, as he's turning to embrace his father, he accidentally punches and elbows his wife, Heidi, right in the face. It is, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Uh, anyway, um, but but to see... If, I mean, this could really get interesting. But here's the b even bigger irony about this. Not only might these Republicans wind up uh, supporting the, the, the one Democrat on earth they hate more than any other Democrat. I've always said, and I, I call it the, 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 the Clinton paradox. Hillary Clinton, if, 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 if Republicans were to look at it, were to say, put aside everything they know about Hillary Clinton and just view her purely through an ideological lens. If you're a Republican and you're going to get stuck with a Democrat that you have to support or you have to tolerate being in office, out of out of the field of, of perspective, well, or if we had a field of perspective, I mean, obviously she's going to be the nominee. But out of the field of, let's say you had a bunch of Democrats, a bunch of high-level Democrats who were still in the race for the nomination, Hillary's probably the one you want if you're a Republican because she is not a liberal. Listen to how she talks on foreign policy. She's a neocon. And, you know, she's and, and on economic issues and whatnot. If she governs as her husband did, Bill Clinton was more of a fiscal conservative than George W. Bush by miles. If she has a similar attitude toward economics, toward economic policy, uh, as her husband did, you know, then she's she, Hillary Clinton is just not a liberal. She's just not. Neither is Bill Clinton. Um Bill Clinton, I've always said, you know, he, he talks like a liberal. He just doesn't walk like one. Bill, you, he talks like one in the sense that you listen to any Bill Clinton speech, almost any Bill Clinton speech, and I'll, there's a caveat there, which I'll explain in a moment. But you listen to almost any Bill Clinton speech, and he sounds like a liberal. He sounds like a modern liberal Democrat. But he did not govern in that way. He governed very much from the center. And, you know, you can there's reasons for that, of course, Newt Gingrich and the Republican Revolution and whatnot in Congress kind of kind of forced Clinton to do that. But that's what he did. That's what happened. And assuming Hillary would operate the same way, if you're a Republican and you're going to get stuck with a Democrat, she's the Democrat you want to get stuck with. She is the least of all evils 
from your Republican point of view. Um, and yet, she's also the most hated Democrat by Republicans on the planet. Hell, her own party doesn't even like her. You know, a lot of Democrats hate her. They, they love Bernie and they hate her, or at least don't trust her. So it's a very interesting dynamic. So, so some Republicans are, are, are going to feel the pressure to support a Democrat because they're so horrified by Trump. The Democrat, they hate the most, who, under different circumstances, would probably tolerate the best. And let me say this. I am now, and, and this, some of you will laugh, that's fine. I'm at, I'm up to about 30%. I, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm up to about 30% now, 30% open to the possibility that this was a plan all along and that Donald Trump really did make a secret deal with the Clintons. Part of why I think that is, look, these are all smart people. I mean, Trump sounds like a drunk at a bar when he's talking about foreign policy, but he's not stupid. Okay. He's not a dumb guy. And the Clintons are brilliant. Even if you think they're pure evil, you have to admit they're brilliant. They're evil geniuses, especially Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, even Republicans say he's probably the most gifted politician ever. Um, and, and Trump isn't showing every time we think, okay, now Trump, now that he's got the nomination or he's about to have it, all but certain, he's going to start to pivot. He's going to start to settle down. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna throttle back on the rhetoric and start to try to seem more statesmanlike, more presidential. That big shift, it's going to happen any day now. And every time it seems like it's starting to happen or there's, there's little signals, little, little signs that it might be happening, he turns around and says, I mean, Donald Trump, the guy who before the, on the eve of the Indiana primary where it was obvious he was going to win, and it was obvious that he was pretty much going to have the nomination sewn up after this. On the eve of that, he's openly saying, it's, still, it's just amazing to me, he's openly saying that he believes that Ted Cruz's dad was part of the conspiracy to kill Kennedy. And he says he believes it because he read it in the National Enquirer. I... I'm sorry, but yes, I am. You know what? You know what? I'm going to go a little further. I'm going to go for the full third. I am now one third open to the possibility that that, that there was a secret plan made, a secret deal. 33 and a third percent. Because... I, I mean, this is because this is just crazy. And I, I at this point, I think he's just going to keep being crazy. Look, look, think of how he set this up. If this was a plan, if this was a conspiracy or if it is a conspiracy, I mean, it's perfect. He knows how to manipulate the media. He's very, very. And this is why I say he's not a dumb guy. He says dumb things, but he's not a dumb guy. He's very, very media savvy. He manipulates the media and the Republican Party into making him the nominee and makes himself so unacceptable that even a high-ranking Republican like Mark Salter will publicly say, we need to support Hillary Clinton. The Democrat Republicans hate the most? Brilliant. If this, if this really is a, a, a secret plot, absolutely brilliant. So I am now one-third open to, not convinced, I'm not saying I'm one-third convinced. I'm one-third open to the possibility that, that this is a conspiracy. Um, I do want to get to uh, this article on Politico. I kind of... I kind of rambled a bit there, and we're almost up to the next break. That happens a lot on this show. I don't know if any of you have ever noticed, but uh, but there is an article up on Politico about uh, – I got to open up the other computer during the break because this uh, Windows Chrome browser is uh, freezing up on me, which is why I started using the other computer. Um, so 
we'll go ahead and, you know, we're going to cruise into a break in a moment, but um, let's see. Uh, here's what we'll do. So when we come back, I want to dive into the uh, Mark Salter stuff a little deeper, and uh, I want to read you that article so I can get some of his exact quotes. And then uh, we'll look at this other article I found about how, now see, this is, and this is part of why, this is part of why I'm now at the full third. There's apparently uh, an operation already underway to begin to uh, target uh, donors, uh, Republican donors, to get them to donate to Hillary. I'm not kidding. See, this is, <laughs> again, they think they're in a position... You're going to have just like, you know, you had the Reagan, you know, you had the, the Reagan Democrats and the Clinton Republicans. They think they're in a position to get some more, some brand new, a brand new batch of Clinton Republicans. Again, to vote for the Democrat they hate the most. Unbelievable stuff. So uh, we'll look at that a little bit deeper, too. So we are coming up on a break, but we're only halfway there. So if anyone would like to enter the conversation tonight, you can. Give us a call, 617-917-4IPM. That's IPM as an IPM Nation, 617-917-4476. You can call us, you can text us. But I would love to hear from you. Hear what you think about my crazy theory. More Unleashed coming up. Don't go away. Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Ohm Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is.
Welcome back, everybody. Matt Connerton Unleashed. We are live. And uh, talking about, well, let, actually, let's, uh, let's look at this Mark Salter situation. Now, Mark Salter, again, he was a uh, senior advisor to the, the John McCain campaign. And I will certainly grant you this uh, caveat when discussing Mark Salter. I don't know. I, I don't know if, if, how much uh, some of you would agree with me, but I think that because he um, because he was a member of the McCain campaign, his his credibility may be a little bit damaged. Because remember, this is the campaign that chose uh, Sarah Palin <laughs> to be McCain's running mate w- without actually vetting her or apparently. Uh, hearing uh, what happens when she opens her mouth and sound comes out. So, so you know, I, I suppose you got to take it all with a grain of salt. But uh, this is from Politico. It says, former McCain advisor, I'm with Hillary. So let me read this quickly. It has come to this. A former senior advisor for John McCain's 2008 presidential campaign expressed his frustration with the state of the race and suggested... Uh, Tuesday that he would vote for Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton over increasingly likely Republican nominee Donald Trump. The GOP, oh, this is a quote. This is what he tweeted out, quote, the GOP is going to nominate for president a guy who reads the National Enquirer and thinks it's on the level. I'm with her. And by the way, I'm with her is the um, kind of the the slogan that uh, I'm seeing in a lot of the um, advertising online. Um, and, and their their campaign to, to stop uh, Trump is specifically targeted in some of these ads where the the tagline is "I'm with her." Um, Salter's tweet followed Trump calling into Fox News earlier in the morning and espousing a conspiracy theory that Rafael Cruz, the father of rival Ted Cruz, was with Lee Harvey Oswald before he assassinated President John F. Kennedy. Uh, Trump said, "Quote: I mean, what was he doing?" Oops, I scrolled down too far. Sorry. <laughs> Quote, I mean, what was he doing? What was he doing with Lee Harvey, Lee Harvey Oswald shortly before the death, before the shooting? It's horrible, unquote. Um, Cruz reacted with fury, lacing into Trump as utterly amoral, a serial philanderer, a pathological liar, and referring to comments a frontrunner made years ago to Howard Stern in referring to his avoidance of venereal disease as his, quote, personal Vietnam, unquote. Uh, Later in the afternoon, Salter retweeted an article from the Washington Post's Chris Saliza uh, expounding upon upon Cruz's outburst, asking the media why it was fixating on Cruz's reaction rather than Trump's initial accusation. And he tweeted, Should we really focus on Cruz's cynicism today? or on likely GOP nom accusing rival's dad of assassinating JFK. (laughs) Well, he's got a point there. Uh, (laughs) Let's see. And then I saw this. uh, I saw this right before uh, coming on the show tonight on Politico. This is is astonishing. Uh, I never thought I'd see this. Hillary forces target Bush donors. Their message to moderate Republicans... She represents your values better than Trump. Now, again, before I read this, this is stunning. This is a stunning dynamic where we're actually seeing uh, surrogates for the Hillary campaign saying, we're going to go after Bush supporters to try to get them to vote for Hillary Clinton. The Democrat that, again... You know, nobody nobody hates Hillary Clinton more than your your typical uh, Republican. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get this to reload here. The uh, page suddenly went away. Uh, I'm on uh, Politico. dot com, and sorry everybody, bear with me. This is running a little sluggish tonight. Uh, it's not me. It's the uh, computer. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Here we go. 
I'm going to scroll down here. I can't get this uh, website to cooperate with me. Here we go. Hillary Clinton supporters in recent days have been making a furious round of calls to top Bush family donors to try to convince them that she represents their values better than Donald Trump. Multiple sources in both parties told Politico. The moves come as Clinton and the Democratic Party try to take advantage of deep unease among establishment Republicans on Wall Street and elsewhere with Trump's emergence as the presumptive Republican nominee. Top targets for the Clinton team include people like Woody Johnson, Jeb Bush's former finance chair, and the owner of the New York Jets. In recent days, Bush's brother and father, former Presidents George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush, have said they plan to skip Trump's nominating convention. Wow. Uh, one person close to Clinton said supporters of the former Secretary of State drew up a list of Wall Street donors who supported Jeb Bush and other unsuccessful Republican candidates months ago, but wanted to wait until Trump locked down the nomination before beginning to make the calls. Uh, quote, when you think about it, there is no downside to making these calls, including for Hillary herself to make them. They may say no, but they will talk to her for half an hour about their view of the world and probably say nice things when asked about her publicly and they might stay away from Trump, unquote. Clinton spokesman Josh Sherwin uh, did not deny the calls were happening. Quote, there's no official outreach from the campaign, but I would not be at all surprised if our supporters are doing it on their own, unquote. One big Clinton donor on Wall Street said that Bush donors are prime targets and that we're a big tent. Potential sources of support for Clinton could include people like Jack Oliver, who also served as a top fundraiser for Jeb Bush, both Johnson and Oliver did not respond to requests for comment. The race for Wall Street cash will be intense. Trump said this week that while he will, uh, would help fund a general election campaign that could cost well over $1 billion for each candidate, he will seek donations. On Thursday, Trump named Stephen, Mon uh, Stephen uh, Muchin. I guess that's how you say that. What, what, I've, you rarely see this uh, com uh, combination of... Uh, Consonants. The, the name is M-N-U-C-H-I-N. -N. Whenever do you see M-N at the beginning of a, a word? Uh, <laughs> maybe the M is silent and it's Nuchin. I don't know. Anyway, he's uh, the head of a private investment firm, uh, Dunn Capital Management, and a former partner at Goldman Sachs uh, as his potential, uh, as his national finance chairman. Nuchin himself has donated to, to uh, Clinton in the past, highlighting the politically ambidextrous nature of many Wall Street donors. But Nuchin's hiring could open Wall Street donors for Trump that might otherwise be closed, making the Clinton uh, effort event more important. Uh, two major Bush donors who received calls from Clinton supporters uh, said they would not switch their allegiance to the likely Democratic nominee despite misgivings about Trump's ability to win and his rhetoric on trade, immigration, and government spending. Um, there's more to this article. If you want to read it, it is up on Politico. But again, this is just a stunning development, and I, it's not a dynamic that I ever could have imagined. Um, but let me, let me point this out, though. The article does focus on Wall Street donors. That's who she's going after. Now, that is not insignificant. It does make sense in that regard because... Um, you know, she's she's tight with Wall Street. Bernie Sanders is uh, is always trying to kind of, you know, kind of drive that home during the debates that uh, that Hillary has ties to Wall Street. She's you know, she she's uh, pressured her to release her transcripts from speeches that she gave to uh, in front of Goldman Sachs and, and others on Wall Street. And, you know, historically, I heard Jim Cramer point this out once. I don't know why this is. I don't know enough about it, but but I do know that apparently uh, historically, Wall Street's actually performed uh, slightly better under Democrats than Republicans. Um, I don't know why, but, you know, if you think about it, um, they certainly uh, were quick to, and this is part of what bit Hillary in 2008, uh, they were very quick to uh, seek and court the, uh, <laughs> the, 
the affections uh, via their cash of Barack Obama. You know, he's owned by uh, by Wall Street. So it's not as though it, it's not as though they don't also donate to Democrats. Look, a lot of um, a lot of these people or a lot of these organizations or special interests or, or whomever uh, will often donate to uh, both sides. They sort of they sort of play both ends because they want to make sure. This is something people don't realize because they want to make sure that whoever does get in is in their back pocket, right? So, you know, you're going to see some of this money going to Trump and some of it going to Hillary. Uh, a few years ago on the show, I talked about how, uh, and this was a surprise to me. I didn't know this until I ha- happened to stumble upon this information. Um, you know, you hear a lot about the Koch brothers, David and Charles Koch, how they give a lot of money to Republicans and whatnot. There's a third Koch brother who doesn't get talked about much. I forget his name. But historically, this third Koch brother has given a lot of money to Democrats. And why would he do that? Why would, why would there be this other Koch brother who donates to Democrats when Charles and David are always donating to Republicans? Well, because you got to hedge your bets. It's smart business. You know, Trump himself, think about this. I mean, you hear it brought up all the time in these debates, and he's unapologetic about it. Donald Trump himself, the current presumptive Republican nominee for president, has historically given tons, billions of dollars in donations to Democratic candidates. In fact, he appears to have given way more to Democrats than Republicans over the years. So, God, this election is so interesting. We'll be right back. One more segment to go. Don't go away. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The name is Bond, James Bond. No, the name is Joe, the Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Ohm Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on OwnTimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Back everybody, Matt Connerton Unleashed as we cruise into our final segment tonight. We are live and talking about uh, <laughs> you know you know what's funny too is uh, thinking about all this uh, all the the Trump and the the um, there was a hashtag on Twitter the other day that was trending uh, hashtag Never Trump. Um, you know a, a lot of people thought by now all these Republicans would sort of fall in line once Trump was clearly the presumptive nominee. And we've seen some of that, but it looks like a lot of it's going the other way. Now, we did talk earlier about um, Mark Salter, who was a, a top advisor to McCain in 2008, very publicly saying he's, you know, saying I'm with her, meaning I'm with Hillary. Uh, not not so much to support her certainly, but to uh, to vote against Trump. And then, uh, well, the candidate he advised, John McCain, 
is uh, is on tape. It says here, this is from Politico, McCain on tape. Trump damages my reelection hopes. Uh, quote, if Donald Trump is at the top of the ticket, unquote, the senator says in a recording obtained by Political, quote, this may be the race of my life, unquote. Uh, let's see, says here, publicly, John McCain insists Donald Trump will have a negligible effect on his campaign for reelection. But behind closed doors at a fundraiser in Arizona last month, the Republican senator and two-time presidential hopeful offered a far more dire assessment to his supporters. Uh, McCain said, according to a recording of the event obtained by Politico, quote, if Donald Trump is at the top of the ticket here in Arizona, with over 30 percent of the vote, vote being the Hispanic vote, no doubt that this may be the race of my life. If you listen or watch Hispanic media in the state and in the country, you will see that it is all anti-Trump. The Hispanic community is roused and angry in a way that I've never seen in 30 years, unquote. By the way, even without Trump, um, you know, I, I've been saying since the 2012 election how I've been talking about how right after right after Romney's loss, I saw all these Republican talking heads, all these strategists and everybody on cable news talking about how uh, clearly this is a wake up call for the Republican Party and the Republican Party has to figure out a way to reach out to Hispanics and stop talking about building walls and deporting everybody and figure out a way to actually reach out to Hispanics and, and not, not make Hispanics feel like the Republican Party is this party full of bigots that hates immigrants, right? Um, and that lasted for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and then the Republican Party in the macro was right back to, uh, we got to build a wall, we got to send everybody home, and blah, blah, blah. So... So they, they learned nothing, of course. Um, and then, but now, <laughs> not only did they not learn anything, but now they've got a presumptive nominee who took all that rhetoric and just, you know, really kind of doubled down on it all. <laughs> just, just it, this is, you know, uh, Trump is, is uh, xenophobia on steroids with this stuff. So, uh so McCain is right to be concerned, but see now the interesting thing about that is this is where, um, this is where the Republican Party. This could be interesting too. Will the apparatus of the Republican Party, the establishment, the RNC, will they sort of try to back channel campaign for Hillary, or try to get donors to send money to Hillary? by communicating to some of these people that, look, we want to make sure Republicans get out to vote. Because the danger here, the reason Trump is going to have a disastrous down-ballot effect for Republicans is a lot of Republicans who are mad at Trump and who don't want Trump, they're going to stay home on Election Day, which means you're going to have all these Democrats voting and not a lot of Republican vote, Republicans voting. I mean, that's a hypersimplification, but... That's the idea, right? If Republicans stay home, not only does Hillary win, but Republicans, they're going to lose the House. They're going to lose the Senate. It's going to have a very, very harmful down-ballot effect. But what if, if they can get it so Republicans don't stay home? Republicans come out, hold their noses, and vote for Hillary. And then, but then, you know, the rest of the ticket vote Republican like they always would. That could save them. But is that possible? Again, we're not talking about, we're not talking about a Democratic candidate who, all things being equal, may appeal to some at least moderate to liberal Republicans. No, we're talking about the Democratic candidate who is the most hated Democrat in the country by Republicans. But wouldn't that be interesting if they, if they try to, if they try to do that, try to make an end run, run around Trump and try to convince voters, vote for Hillary. And wouldn't it be interesting? See again, this is why. This is why I'm now a third open to the idea that this was all that this is just a giant con. Because think about it, if they can, if if. 
if the Republican establishment can kind of work it that way, try to f- try to funnel money to Hillary, get these donors donating to Hillary, try to and try to convince some Republican voters to hold their noses and vote for Hillary, but still, you know, make sure you get out and vote. But we got to stop Trump, right? Meanwhile, Hillary as blatantly as she possibly can, because she doesn't have the skills of subtlety and finesse that her husband does. So she'll just be really blatant and obvious about it, but it may not matter. If she just goes ahead and tries to look as, as, as moderate, tries to look like a, a, as moderate to conservative a Democrat as she possibly can and tries to get right in the middle Maybe even a little bit center right, but 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 while still looking like a credible Democrat, but trying to appeal to Republicans as much as she can possibly get away with, and sort of winking at them and saying, "Look, really, I, I I'm look, look at Bill. I'm going to be like Bill, and Bill was a fiscal conservative, so don't worry about it." She can certainly do that with the Wall Street crowd, right? You know, she can wink at them and say, "Come on, you know I'm with you guys." What if she just kind of tries to do that to the entire Republican Party? Hey, guys, come on. Let, that whole Benghazi thing and all that, you know, let's just let bygones be bygones. You don't hold it against me how I botched that, and I won't hold it against you that you dragged me through those hearings, and that's the past. Let's look to the future. And we don't want the future to be Trump, so vote for me. Is any of this even possible? Can, can they possibly pull this off? You know, what if she what if she really, you know, she's not comfortable talking about social issues to begin with. Right. I mean, socially, you figure, OK, socially, she's a liberal sort of. I mean, she's very pro choice, obviously. So she's liberal there um, on gay marriage. She got there eventually. She had to be dragged kicking and screaming, but she got there eventually. So she's liberal now on that. But what if she sort of downplays all that, knowing that Democrats are going to vote for her no matter what? She doesn't have to do a single thing to motivate and and mobilize Democrats. Democrats, she could be the worst possible Democratic candidate possible, and it wouldn't matter because Democrats are also are they're going to automatically want to vote against Trump. So she doesn't have to worry about getting Democrats to show up on Election Day to support her. They're going to vote for her. They're going to show up and vote no matter what. She can take them for granted. So what if she just kind of downplays all the liberal stuff, everything that appeals to Democrats, and really tries to emphasize that she's pro-Wall Street, that she's... You know, try to sound more and more like her husband. Try to sound like a fiscal conservative. Um, try to emphasize being tough on crime. Republicans really like that kind of stuff. You know, Hillary supported mandatory minimums. She's pro-death penalty, uh, which is all stuff I hate about her. But but a lot of Republicans really love that kind of stuff. Um, she's a drug warrior. She's very pro-drug war, doesn't want to legalize cannabis, all of that. Um, she can play that up. Again, those, these are things about her that I personally find repulsive, but a lot of Republicans love that stuff. Conservatives love that stuff. Conservatives are very pro-drug war, pro-death penalty, pro-war. You know, she can really emphasize how she wants to, you know, she, she, she talks as tough as any Republican ever will in terms of foreign policy, right? Um, and, and she doesn't have to worry about about anyone thinking she's, you know, Republicans always want someone who's going to be very tough, right? Hillary, one thing I will compliment Hillary Clinton on, can't say she's weak. She does project a certain don't F with me attitude. Uh, She's always struck me as very strong. So she can play on that. Republicans may learn as much as it will kill them, given the circumstances Given, you know, again, we're talking about the anti-Trump Republicans, but under the circumstances, more establishment Republicans, they may learn to like that about her. 
maybe maybe that's the trick. And and the Republican establishment can help her win to beat Trump. Because like I said, if 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 establishment Republicans can just look past their hatred of her, she's not a liberal. She's not Barack Obama. But the funny thing about all this is Hillary wins. See, she's really in the catbird seat because ultimately she wins no matter what. The scenario I just laid out might work great for her. Or it might not work at all. And Republicans are just going to be turned off. But either way, what's it matter? Either way, she wins. Either way, she wins. I, I, you know, unless Donald Trump can somehow win over the establishment, but it's not happening. They're still panicking. Now that he's the presumptive nominee after the Indiana primary, I thought, nah, now they'll start to really fall in line. They're not falling in line. And there may be more Mark Salters who come out and say, you know what? I'm with her. Stunning. I never would have imagined. God, what an interesting election this is. I never would have imagined I would see the day where a a, a Republican, someone who worked on John McCain's campaign would say, I'm with her. I'm with Hillary. Amazing. This is amazing stuff. We'll be back tomorrow night with our Friday night edition exclusively on IPM Nation 2. Thank you all for listening tonight. And uh, we're out for now. Talk at you later.